at that. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you can't tell already from recent videos, you're joining me from, oh, that, is a, that is a hell of a sunrise. From the spectacular Morecambe Bay, as local as it gets for me. Um, in today's video, I want to talk, look at that, all about the telephoto lens and how you can use it as a wide angle lens, uh, which might sound a little bit strange, um, but without dragging it out, as I always try to do in these videos, we're basically going to be shooting some panoramas and I'll tell you what with the light that we should be getting with this location it should be a hell of a spot for it It's a cracker. Oh, it is pure, pure beauty. Oh man, it's one of them mornings where everything comes together. I don't even mean just for the photography. It's one of them mornings where, honestly, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world at this moment in time. It's peaceful. There's not a breath of wind. Views are to die for. Um, this is a vista. Or, or a series of vistas that I've wanted to capture now for years, but I've just never really known how to go about it, and I've just started figuring it out now. It's special stuff. We're looking over Morecambe Bay into the Lake District National Park. The forecast is pretty much spot on. It was saying it was going to be fairly clear to the east. What I wanted was for that sun to come up and hit those mountains over there. Now, for anyone that knows this location, you'll probably know Morecambe Bay is very famous for its stunning sunsets. They are ridiculous, to the point where, for somebody that lives there, you end up just taking them for granted, you know? It's west facing, northwest facing. In fact, in the summer, the sun sets behind the mountains in the Lake District. Sensational. Now, to get to my point, because of that, I think I've always been quite blinded by those beautiful sunsets. I never really thought of sunrise, you know? Allow the sun to come up at the other side of Morecambe Bay and illuminate some of the Lake District fells, our Coniston Old Man, Scarfell Pike. And that's what's happening this morning. It is gorgeous. So my idea here is a bit of an oil painting scene, you know? I want this to look like that. The clouds are perfect for us. We've got these quite, um, what would you say, like subtle muted colors, pinks, oranges, um, very pale and faded almost, and it works perfectly. Really pale blues across the bay. It's madness. Honestly, it is so beautiful. Now I'm gonna put an image up on the screen here. I've been spending a little bit of time here recently, and uh, I captured this just a few nights ago at sunset with the telephoto. And I hope you can agree, it's got that kind of oil painting feeling to it. We get these oyster catches that fly across the frame. And, uh, I was trying to capture them with a slowish shutter speed to capture the blur, and I love the effect. And because on that particular night there was no wind, we were getting the reflections of the oyster catches as well. So I'm kind of going for that this morning. Um, but, and let's get more into the title of this video, I'm doing a panorama to try and uh, capture the vista, but also have those Oyster catches along the bottom of the frame, just flying, you know, hovering above the water, and then that slowly shutter speed. I'm shooting at one fortieth of a second. It captures a little bit of blur, but to the point where you can still see that it's birds in flight, in motion. It's unbelievable. Now, honestly, what a morning. Um, 
I'm gonna shoot and talk because it is stunning. Um, so tell a photo. I, this is a scene that I would have always wanted to shoot with a wide angle lens because it's a wide vista. You know, that's always felt really logical to me, but here's the problem. If you shoot this scene now with a wide angle lens, you lose the mountains, you lose the background critically. And um, it's such a shame because yes, you get that wide angle. You don't even have to shoot that wide. Honestly, you could get all of them mountains at probably 30 mil and that's still wide enough, but they're so far off in the background because of perspective. And that is so incredibly important. And that's exactly why I believe the telephoto lens, the zoom lens is fantastic to use, you know, as a wide angle, use it instead of your wide angle, but for a very similar purpose. We're still capturing a wide vista and using the telephoto instead of the wide angle lens does two really important things. Firstly, we get this compression effect where we're kind of hypothetically bringing the mountains towards us. So they retain that majesty, that magnificence, um, you know, that grandeur of big mountains. You know, these are the highest mountains in England across Morecambe Bay here. You shoot with the wide angle lens, the loss in the background, they're just little hills. Shoot with the telephoto lens, we're zoomed right in. What am I in at here? 150 mil, we bring the mountains towards us. And like I say, we we retain um, that the, the imposing nature of those mountains, which is exactly what we want. And that's exactly why I've struggled all these years, because I was always so quick to shoot with a wide angle. Secondly, with the telephoto lens, what we get is, as long as we're shooting a panel, almost like a controlled vista photograph, I suppose I'd call it. So you're still getting a wide vista because we're shooting a panorama but we're really we're so tightly in control as the photographer of what it is we're photographing so for example for this shot I'm thinking a two by one it might have to be a three by one crop and a nice traditional panel of those mountains but shooting across the water at f5 focused on the mountains so the water and the birds as they fly across are going to be a little bit out of focus ah stunning absolutely beautiful so, I've been babbling on for a bit too long. The sun's coming up now, you can probably see it on my face. Honestly, what a morning. Oh, just beautiful. ISO 100, F5, 140th of a second. Five images from left to right. I've made sure I've leveled out my tripod as I've been taking it. Very, very important so that it, it can all be stitched together in post-processing properly. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I feel like I was talking for quite a lot then, so cheers if you're still with me. It just gets you, doesn't it, landscape photography? When the light kicks off, when the location's top draw, it just gets you, it gets me anyway. Um, so I'm retreating now, back towards, well, the town, <laughs> land, the promenade, uh, for two reasons really. Firstly, most importantly, because the tide is on the way in and uh, it's not something to be messed around with in these parts, but secondly, uh, another thing that I want to get a shot of, you've probably seen it on a few of my videos recently, is the stone jetty. I think that's it there, it's back there somewhere. So it's a pier that jits out into Morecambe Bay, and there's this kind of, it's just a, a building, I think it's a cafe, 
and there's a lighthouse on it and uh, I think I've said before you know it's just prominent in the area everyone knows it and uh, I have always just thought it'd be a really cool photograph to have for my exhibition which was supposed to be sorry guys it was supposed to be in Lancaster Town Hall this summer of course um, we all know what happened this summer or this year <laughs> um, so that's been postponed which I'm not really too bothered about to be honest you know it's gonna happen at some point even if it's in you know 10 years time it doesn't really matter um, it just mean I'll have some um, some more images behind me and what's been great you know the, obviously the pandemic's been overwhelmingly bad <laughs> but in a selfish way it's been kind of good um, for me to be able to get loads of nice images of my local area which otherwise I just wouldn't have got and the stone jetty this damned building <laughs> is one of them but I've always struggled with perspective and we'll get into that in a minute and uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the telephoto lens I'm going to use it as a wide angle almost but to um, to still try and retain um, what did I say the magnificence of the mountains at the back and um, yeah make sure the stone jetty isn't too small either anyway let's get over there we'll get set up and we'll have a chat So before we get into anything, I've got to show you this guys, get a look at this, there we go, off in the background, there, look at that, the local Aldi, if you want yourselves an umbrella, 2 99 from Aldi, top drawer, right let me turn you around, messing about here, messing about, that loot, right I'm back, um, so I must admit I've kind of already got the shot just because the light was quite nice and it's kind of behind a bank of cloud at the minute and what we were getting was the stone jetty itself the building and the whole of the pier or most of the pier was all lit up it was gorgeous but the background the mountains were actually as they are now looking quite gloomy and moody and gray which i, I quite liked i like that contrast you know um i do think if we had the light that we had when i took the first shot this could be bettered but that's fine you know it's really close to the gaff I can return here and probably better this image uh, but I still think this one's going to be really nice you know I think this one actually in terms of an exhibition um, display might be to a lot uh, might be a lot more to people's taste you know um, that morning walk where you've got that golden light the stone jet is lit up you know when you get the reflections of the sun off glass off the windows and stuff I think it's that sort of thing um, but yeah let's get into this anyway because I'm a bit calmer now. It looks like wonky to me. Is that wonky? Hmm, whatever. Uh, a bit calmer now, so we'll talk a little bit more about using the telephoto as a wide angle. Before we get into that image on the screen, what I did is I took a shot as if I was using my wide angle lens. So I used my Takina 11 to 16. I actually even shot it at 16 mil, so it wasn't even as wide as it could have been. And uh, I want to look at that image now like it's just everything it like you capture the vista we've got the mountains but they are absolutely tiny in the background they're barely noticeable I don't think it's like that much of a bad image but you know it's, it's a wide angle it's the sort of image you take on your phone and unfortunately everything that you're looking at and that you, you're admiring be it the stone jetty the pier the beach even um, the the mountains in the background they just get lost. All the subjects just get lost, then it's just a big snapshot of, of what looks like a lot of small subjects. And that's where the beauty of using your telephoto lens as a wide angle comes in, because you're still capturing a wide vista, you know, like you so often want from your wide angle, but you don't lose the size. That's the main thing, in my opinion, because we know that taking a panel, we've got that controlled a photograph whereby we get that letterbox we're only photographing what we want to photograph so for example here what am I zoomed in at now 100 mil so I'm zoomed really close in 
you can probably see the stone jetty on the back there. I'm zoomed right in on the stone jetty, but because then I'm panning across, three by one or two by one crop, I'm photographing what I want to photograph, as opposed to that wide angle shot, where you're getting a load in the photograph as well. Yes, you could probably shoot this at probably 40 mil, 30 mil, and only really, it's still a fairly wide angle, and only really have the stone jetty on the right hand side, the mountains on the left, but you're still not going to get that compression at effect like I said before where we're hypothetically bringing the mountains closer to us and they retain that majesty and that's what this is all about honestly so same again everything with the panel first things first I've leveled out my tripod head um, to make sure that as I pan from right to left it's going to stay relatively level like I could do with a, um, a, a proper leveling head really <laughs> um, but I always find this is all right you know you want to be accurate but not not, I find, you know, not to the point where you, you might miss out on the photograph sort of thing, you know. Post processing is going to do a decent job of stitching it together as long as you give it the best chance, you know. You can't have your, your tripod all wobbling all over the place. You need it fairly level and consistent. So I'm shooting at um, ISO 100, 1 100th of a second, an F5 critically here. I'm focused on the stone jetty, on the cafe, on the building, the lighthouse so that the focus will fall off as we move to the left hand side of the image you know and, and the mountains are going to be a little bit out of focus i'm going to like that i think that's going to look cool by the time the panels stitch together as i go from right to left as well by the way you can go from left to right if you want i think i always end up going right to left um, as i go from right to left i overlap each photograph by about a half just to make sure that i'm not i don't you know have a gap which would just wreck the panel if, so you just got to keep an eye on what you're photographing as you move left very slightly with your camera, make sure you're still capturing half the photograph on the right hand side that was on the left hand side of the previous image, if that makes sense. Uh, which is really important, again, just to make sure that the software is able to stitch it all together properly. But yeah, I think this is gonna be cool. You know, it's gonna be a nice shot. We've got a nice fall off of, of focus in the foreground as well of the beach. So the, the stone jetty, the building especially, should be pin, uh, tack sharp, pin sharp. And then what's nice, is we've got this kind of left hand side of the pier uh, around about here which actually leads us out into the mountains so it really is a story from right to left and i like that a lot so i'll show you this one now i hope it comes out all right Right, it is time for the cup of tea. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please remember, if you don't know already, um, I have got a print sale on at the minute, 30% off all my prints, including my limited editions. Um, I've got quite a lot of sales so far, it's been really um, encouraging, so thank you so much for the support for anybody that's purchased one. I'll put a link down in the video description below, and um, please go and check it out. I've redone all my prints page and everything. It looks pretty cool, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's the cheapest I've ever been, so if you'd like to get one for Christmas, <laughs> um, yeah, go and check it out. But overall, most importantly, thank you so much for tuning in, and of course, for your wonderful support. It really does mean the world. And uh, if you have a quick second to spare, please give the video a thumbs up. As I, as I always say, it really helps out my content here on YouTube. And um, comment down below, love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Out. Thank you.